Hey guys, it's Kate, and today we're gonna be doing my 22 week pregnancy update. So we're 22 weeks along, literally today. Sunday is our changeover day to the next week. And we actually had kind of an eventful week last week, I guess. Um, as far as what's going on with the pregnancy, I feel her moving quite a lot. She has just a lot of activity happening. And mostly when I'm feeling movements, I'm definitely feeling more than 10 movements within an hour, which we're still early. We're not supposed to be at that milestone yet, or I'm not supposed to be kick counting yet, I don't think. But um, definitely when she's awake, she is moving. <laughs> she moves a lot, and um, it's, it's really exciting, but it definitely feels super weird. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what I expected, but... It definitely feels like there's a goldfish or something living inside of me sometimes. And uh, she's gotten to where um, if she kicks me and like my hand's on my belly, my hand moves and it's crazy. <laughs> but anyway, so to get into what happened this week. On Friday, I went to see the MFM. That's the Maternal Fetal Medicine Specialist or a high-risk OBGYN. Uh, well, I'm not sure if he's an OBGYN, but he's an obstetrician. Um, but I, I didn't know what to expect if you watch our vlogs. I, I had no idea what was going to happen at the appointment. And so my father-in-law took me and we got there early because uh, it's at a hospital that's about an hour away from us. And uh, it, you fill out the normal paperwork because I'd never been there before. And then they didn't allow any filming. So that's why there's not really any filming in the actual facility. They don't allow any photography or filming except probably in like the birth suites or something. But anyway, um, so anyway, they took me back and just a reminder, my appointment was at 1130. So I was like, okay, you know, an hour is pretty reasonable expectation for a doctor's appointment or a consultation. So um, I didn't really bring any snacks or anything. And it ended up being a two hour appointment and my poor father-in-law was just sitting outside in the waiting room the whole time and I feel bad because I, I didn't get signal, we didn't really get signal in the building either so I couldn't even text him from the like next room and be like, we're still in the middle of this. Um, yeah, so they took me back into the usual, you know, weight, blood pressure, whatever, and then proceeded to have an hour and a half ultrasound. So first they did an internal ultrasound or a transvaginal ultrasound and looked at my cervix and then they switched to the abdominal ultrasound. Um, I guess that the baby just wasn't cooperative. <laughs> um, when we started the ultrasound, she was laying in a way that her legs were in a V and her feet were over her head and then her arms were just up. And <laughs> she definitely looked like a little gymnast and then she was kind of moving around but it was sort of like our anatomy scan that she, if they wanted to look at her head all of a sudden her head was moving and she just or she'd cover it and um, she definitely wasn't enjoying it and she kicks the wand a lot so um, anyway yeah it was I was back in that ultrasound room for an hour and a half and when you're laying on that table for that long and you know getting looked at I think you just start to convince yourself that they're looking for that long because something is wrong when really she just wasn't in a great position to get every single shot that they wanted. This ultrasound was a lot more thorough than the anatomy scan, which I know if you've had an anatomy scan, you probably think like, how can that be? But it was, um, they took video footage of a lot of the heart, you know, beating and her lungs moving and her kicking and just, um, they took over 200 pictures of the ultrasound and then they review them. So just to get to the point, um, she's perfect, she's healthy, there's absolutely no markers for anything that they saw with her, which I really didn't expect to see anything anyway because my anatomy scan was fine too. And we did the PGS testing, so we kinda know that she also has a really good chance of being just a normal, healthy little baby. And, um, her heart rate was 144 beats per minute, which is um, pretty much what it always is. I don't know, it, it's always been between 140 and 150, so very normal. But the one thing that they did point out that kind of has me concerned, um, obviously, 
must not be that big of an issue because they didn't do anything for it yet. But when they were looking at my cervix and placenta and measuring things, they said that my uterus, instead of looking more U-shaped, it looked more V-shaped, which I think is called funneling. And because you know, WebMD, you can figure out anything that the doctor's saying at two o'clock in the morning when you can't sleep because you're figuring out what, because you're playing back in your head what he said in the appointment. Um, but basically my cervical length is measuring fine. So he's not super concerned about that V shape, but it's just something that we need to monitor and that I'll go back to my normal practitioner and talk about. But basically that V shape can kind of start to indicate that you're going to go into preterm labor or that you are at a higher risk for preterm labor, which obviously mama don't want. So it's just something that we need to monitor. He said that um, he would probably recommend that we start doing Prometrium, which is a vaginal suppository. <laughs> there's, no, there's no nice way to put it. And it basically just helps support the cervix. It helps it from getting weak, I guess. I don't, I don't really know what you would use it for in your second or third trimester, but definitely something that I'm going to bring up in about 10 days when we have another appointment with our OB and just make sure that everything's looking the way it should. Um, in my anatomy scan, they didn't say anything. They said everything looked fine. So I don't know if it changed. Um, judging by the research that I did online, your cervix can change all day, every day, any day. Um, sometimes it could be a V, then sometimes your length could your cervix could lengthen and it could go back to its U. So um, I don't really know how concerned I should be at. He didn't, you know, he didn't prescribe me any medication or anything for it. He just said it's something that we should look at. And the nice thing is he said, I don't have to go back. I don't have to have another appointment with him or anything like that. Um, as far as what I was going for, so as far as what I was going for, the main focus was that my OBGYN was concerned that I take baby aspirin. It's, I think, normal for any IVF patient generally. I mean, I have a couple of girls that have asked if they should be taking it because they're not. But for my clinic, it's very normal. It's part of the prototype. When you leave the clinic, they tell you to continue it, that it creates healthy placenta. And that's basically also what this doctor said. Um, he said that new guidelines had come out literally within the week that just suggests that if you've had previous losses or um, if you have blood clotting disorders, which we do have a history of both of those, that it's just healthy to take and it's very healthy for the placenta. And he said to just continue taking it. I was sort of back and forth on if I would be okay going off of it um, just because I do get kind of superstitious about medication that's gotten me this far. Um, he did indicate that we may have to add injections at the end of our pregnancy depending on blood work and different things and he did say too to just keep monitoring my thyroid so far all of my levels are great i haven't increased my level of thyroxine medication at all so i haven't had to change medication for my thyroid if you don't know what that is um that my thyroid is still performing really well during the pregnancy it did the level did go up a little bit but it didn't go up enough to be concerning just uh, marginally so my thyroid's still handling everything really well, which is great. Uh, and so that's that's basically it. I only actually saw the doctor for about 20 minutes, maybe. And uh, so that was really comforting, I guess, just to hear that she's totally perfect. And um, he was really surprised that we weren't on more medication currently just from um, history of what's happened with us and, and previous things that have taken place in this body. Um, so he, he was seemed really surprised that we're having such a healthy pregnancy and that everything's going great. So let me show you the exciting stuff, which is, which are pictures. I'm going to show you two because they are still very similar to the anatomy scan that I had. So here, It'll focus. Hello. You can see here's her little face. Um, in here, her mouth is actually open a little bit, and you can kind of see the tooth buds and everything. So just a really cute, really sweet photo. And then this one is her foot. It's her cute little foot. <laughs> she kept kicking the wand which she did at our anatomy scan too um, but 
but it's just crazy to see how detailed all of the feet bones are and just all of the bones that you can see. It's nuts. Um, but it was cute. I don't really know what the significance of giving us the foot photo was, but it is something cute to have. Um, they did click onto the 3D a little bit, which was the first time I had ever seen her in 3D. But just because she kept having like her arm in front of her face or something, it just kind of looked like weird sculpture dripping in chocolate or an alien dripping in chocolate. It, it was very hard. You know, you couldn't really make out any of her face. I don't know if they saw better images and just didn't show me because they had me rolling on one side of my belly, which would be like facing the monitor, and then I would roll away. They would have me roll away to get a, a different shot or a shot that they needed, and I wouldn't be able to see the monitor. So I, I kind of went from various stages of being able to look at the monitor and see what they were seeing, and then not being able to see what they saw, and I, I, don't, I don't really know. I don't need a 3D. It's not what she's going to end up looking like anyways. I always think that they look kind of weird, and you can't really... You still can't really see any detail. I mean, we're not going to know who or what she looks like until she's actually here, which will be in 18 weeks or so. Bye, guys.